talked a little earlier about the hotel and, and my nose and how dry it is here and stuff, so I'm going to still be poking through a bunch of cough drops today. But uh, yeah, I find it very, very dry here. Um, so calculations. Here's a chapter that there's a pile of people that get very uptight about. They think about formulas and have to memorize formulas. My approach to this um, is a little different. I want you to remember as little as possible. Anytime that I had to write exams, I hated the thoughts of having have to remember or memorize a whole bunch of things. So um, I, I sort of condensed it that you only need to know a few things. So a handful of things, if you really, if, if it makes you nervous, the very first thing you do before you even open your exam is jot down a few things. If calculations is an issue for you, jot down a few things, and that's all you have to do, then you should be able to come back and, and get anything that you need to know. Okay, equations. Really, all, all we're looking for is equations. They're just a bunch of information. You put them together in some kind of fashion and, and basically you will come up with the answer that you're looking for. So equations aren't these real heavy formulas. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to do anything. So you have groups of numbers and you do something with them. So don't be afraid of uh, formulas as per se. So if you're given anything like B equals four, C equals uh, 12, just take something that like a plus b equals c. You can do a equals c minus b by taking the b and minusing both sides. Or that you know you can manipulate. If you know one formula, you can get three. Whatever you can, I guess if you have three pieces of information, you can get lots of different formulas. So this particular one right here, a plus b equals c. Get the same formula. If you knew that one, you will also know A equals A plus B minus B, because if you're going to do, if you have a plus and a minus, it means you have nothing, right? So you have A, that's not a 9, it's an A. <laughs> a, and you had B there, so you had, you're, all you did to this side is you added the minus B. So this is the exact same thing here, and we just subtracted B. So that equals C minus B. Because whatever you do over here, different, you have to do on this side, different. So your new formula, without you having to memorize anything, is A equals C minus B. So now you only had to remember one formula, but now you get the second formula. So go back to this first one again, you get A plus B equals C, you start out with that one. So you have A minus A, so if you have these two, plus B equals C, I have to do the same thing on this side, minus A, so this cancels out, and now I just have B equals C minus A. So this is another formula, and you didn't have to memorize it, you just derived it from this one. So the way I look at this is, I don't want to remember anything I don't have to remember. When it comes down to it, I want to simplify this easy and remember as little as possible and just manipulate what I have to do. So that's what I'm going to try to go through with this. If we're going to use that same approach to everything that we, we do. Um, you know, we deal with straight lines, curves, inclines, parallel lines, perpendicular lines. There's a lot of laws, principles that go along with them. And if you understand those and the verbiage, you know a lot of things. And on your exam, I think you're going to find they're going to give you information, 
if you know what the information they're actually giving you, it's very simple. If you're guessing or you're thinking they're looking for big complicated formulas, they're not. It's if you know what they're giving you, because they're giving you all the information you require, it's the going back and thinking, go back to basics, do one of the three or four things that you're looking for, and everything else will fall into place. So when it comes to calculations, does it make you nervous when you do calculations? Not too bad, not too bad. Okay, as long as it doesn't freak out, this is going to, I'm hoping this will help a lot. Number one, angles. Here are ones that we're interested in. We want to know what a right angle is and how we can use that. Acute angle, again, acute angle is acute plane is going to be less than 90, obtuse, you know, it's more than 90. So if you know complementary angles are two angles that add up to 90, supplementary angles are two angles that add up to 108, or complementary is two adding up to 90, complementary is two adding up to 180. So again, if you know those and they tell you when they use the verbiage here, you know when they talk about a right triangle, you know what they're talking about, right? Because they will tell you you have a right triangle on one side here and one side there, and they're going to ask you for something different. You have to be able to picture in your mind, this is what a right triangle is, and you can plug the numbers in wherever you want. It doesn't really matter if you have a triangle, if it's this way, that way, what you're calling base or height won't make any difference. So one of the things, there's a couple things here you're going to have to memorize. Area and circumference. There are two formulas that you're going to have to memorize. That's what I say when you go in. If they don't stick in your head, they don't automatically pop out. First thing to do when you go in before you start writing is write down a couple formulas. <coughs> circumference. Number one, this one here, circumference, is the diameter times pi. One. You have to know that. In order to do much at all, you're going to have to know what pi is and you're going to know the value to four decimal places. So either when you first write it down, write down pi is 3.1416, you have to know that in order to... Sorry, back home we normally approximate it to 1.14. Uh, is that okay? No. Okay. If you, and the reason I say that, some of the questions here I'm aware of, you will have an answer that is... Uh, 11.999 or 12, which is only one thousandth difference between the two. If you make this rounded to one, one, uh, 3.142, you'll get a little over 12. If you leave it at 1.6, you'll get the correct answer of 9.999. Go to four decimal places. So this is the number you're going to use. Memorize it if, if you're not quite sure if it doesn't come to you naturally, write it down on the scrap piece of paper they give you when you first go into your exam. Well, you are allowed to have a calculator, mm -hmm. so you do, to see your pi, and I'll give it to you anyway. Yeah. Right? Just round it down. Mm -hmm. Now they will give you, they supply you the calculator, you're not allowed to bring your own. Because it can't have a memory, it can't have a bunch of different things, so they give you the calculator that you're going to have. And it will probably be on there, pretty sure that it is. But this is one of the things you have to know. What goes along with that is circumference. Circumference equals pi times the diameter. So that's one formula that you're going to have to remember. Either remember it and you can recall it or write it down right off the bat. So in this case, if we have a 23 uh, or a 20 inch diameter, it's 3.1416 times 20 will give you the circumference. What is the circumference? It's like taking a piece of string, wrapping it around the outside, then taking the piece of string off and seeing how long it is. 
It's a distance or how long it take, what the distance you would do if you walked around that circle. <clears throat> so you need to know that. And uh, when we get into doing, using this formula, it will, you'll, you'll understand a little bit why you need to know that. Now, <coughs> there's also this one here, <coughs> which is the circumference is 2 pi r. I don't cover that. If that's the form you're used to, use it. When I simplify it, I'm only going to give you one for me. I'm not going to try to give you two or three to remember. I'm only going to give you the one. The reason I chose this one is it's only get two things to remember, the pi and the diameter. You don't have to remember two or anything else. You know, I always try to remember the shortest one, one that, that draws as little as it can on my brain. So circumference, that's one thing you have to memorize. Other thing is area. So we get area, three things we got to do with area. We need area of a circle, a square or a rectangle, and a triangle. So there's three. So area. <clears throat> the three things that we got to remember is, and again, multiple. And here's one, if you don't mind remembering point seven eight six four. I don't like doing that because I will never remember. I can't remember telephone numbers. So the odds of me remember that, I don't want to do it. I come over and look at area for a circle. So circle area equals pi radius squared. That's the easiest for me to remember. It's only got a couple things, radius squared and pi, to remember for the, for the circle. For a square or a rectangle, area equals the length times the width. Now when we talk about area, we're not talking about this anymore, we're talking about all this colored spot inside, all the colored spot inside here. So if you have a length and a width, you can find the area in here. Now the other one is a triangle. area of a triangle is, again, you don't want to learn or have to remember anything at all. What is a triangle? Go back to what is a triangle. So if I have a triangle, let's call it a, it's not even a straight triangle. What do we know about a triangle? We know that if I turn one upside down, Put them back together, they're a square, right? Yeah. And it doesn't matter how, this is a triangle, that's a triangle. If I make it into a long triangle, same thing. If I take that triangle, flip one upside down, I'm going to make the exact same, so I'm getting a half. So if I remember this, if I remember this formula, all I have to do is know it's one half. Again, I'm going to call it length time width. Would be base times height if you really want to get down to it. I don't really care because I only want half of this. So I want half of that. So I don't even have to know that bottom formula. I know this one. So I know a, rec or a, a triangle is half of a square or half of a rectangle. So this automatically is in my head before I write it down. Again, try to remember the least amount that you have to do. So does this make sense so far? Yeah. So there's a couple things. Remember this one. Remember this one. Remember this one. Remember this one, and you can figure that one out. So right now we've got four things that we have to sort of memorize, be able to recall, or put it on paper as soon as you get there. Now again, uh, you know you can figure out this by diameter, this by rate. You can do a lot of different ways. I only suggest you pick one if you already know one continue with that one. If you don't, try to stick to ones that are very simple. Make sense? Yeah. Are you comfortable with that? Yeah. Okay, for definitions, just so we all know what we're talking about, 
we have a full square, which is just, or a full circle, which is 360 degrees. Then we can have two circles within a circle. So this would be an eccentric. This circle doesn't have the same running relationship that this one has. It gets offset, so it's running around this center, and the big circle's running around that. That's called eccentric. The reason we want to know these is if one of the questions tells you have an eccentric shaft, you want to know what they're talking about. Think concentric means you have the same thing as here, except they both run around the same center. So if I was to take a dial indicator and measure this one, it will run the same as if I had a dial indicator on that one. They won't be, they won't have different centers. They'll both run around the same axis. So again, concentric, just know you don't have to, there's nothing to remember other than it's running around the same axis. So when they say you have a concentric shaft or whatever, they're talking about something, you know they're talking about this. If they say it's eccentric, like the crankshaft or something, you know they're talking about that. And then you have diameter, radius, arcs, ports, uh, all that sort of stuff. Again, it's just the verbiage of it. So if they're asking you a question, they use any of those words, you know what they're talking about. And it will, come, it will, it will all come together when we try to do a couple questions. Larry, before we move on, uh, I see the circle break down the circle and the cord came to mind. Would it be doing a chordal distance of both patterns and stuff, uh, Larry? Would it be covering off of anything like that? Um, I don't think so. I have never heard they do. Okay. Um, I know it, it is in the machinist part uh, and the pipe fitters part, but I'm not aware of it being on the industrial mechanic part. Um, if you ever run across it, let me know. I know you did have like, the pole patterns and then have a rectangle and a circle, you know what I mean? And you had to iron all that. I'm just wondering, hopefully, you don't come up with boards or anything. You gotta pick up that missing. Well, it's uh, if we have time, we can. I just want to prepare for that. Interested, for uh, because it's in front of industrial mechanics, if we have to cut a gasket, we normally go get a blank mm -hmm. and go clamp it to the thing and then you use your ball peen and all your holes. We're not really nor we're not really normally making flanges or any of that sort of stuff. Um, but like again, if it's six holes or five holes, you do a layout and it's all going to come back to making a circumference, making two two concentric circles, one being the full hole circle, one being a circle in the center that you're going to use for your pipe or your flange. Um, and then dividing by six using a set of dividers. And then you use your circumference and you can go through there and, and scribe off each one and then sort of divide them in the middle. Okay. So practically there's one way of doing things mathematically, so there's another way. That's why I don't think they really get into it. Um, because of the layout pattern you know, will ask you how to lay it out. You use uh, blue ink and then you use your dividers or whatever. They get into that part of it, but mm -hmm. I don't think they ask you between six pole holes or whatever it is. I don't believe it's all good. Yeah. No. And, that, and that's like exactly there, and that's why I'm here. Like, all this information you get in your modules, you don't know exactly what you got to be studying for. And there's so much information there. You could spend if hours. I would, if I were to memorize it all or try to understand it all, I'd be a rocket scientist, I'm sure. Yeah. Well, you take that book. You ever see the, the handbook you have with all the formulas and Strengths and metals and all the other stuff that's in it. I don't know how many. Like they're they're on a 24 version or something that they keep adding in that book and a very very fine print. Uh, your brain, I don't think, could hold it all. Uh, easier now with computers and laptops and, and phones and all the other stuff where you can you know, readily get that information. Um, but to have it on your brain, I'm not. I don't think that. I, yeah, I mean, there. just on bolts and uh, internal threads and external threads, there must be a hundred formulas just for your being your Well, track fill sizes, uh, what you use, the speeds you use for the cut the holes, the 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 roots, <laughs> flank the yeah. Yeah. So, it, and that's really not the idea. The intent is, and I'm finding that the, as things go on and things get so uh, easily accessed, 
information. I mean, I used to have to go get a book. If I wanted something, I had to go get a manual or whatever and flip through a bunch of pages. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of people just get on their phone and they've got it right there. So it is getting easier to access information and they realize that, I believe. So really, they're, they're asking you things that, you know, like if you're going to fabric, fabricate a tank or you know, they're, you know, how fast is the hydraulic piston going to move based on the pressure and the diameter and all that sort of stuff. That's more or less the things that you'll have to calculate in the field without having to draw something. I don't know that they're available in multiples of saying you know, how much pressure, how much diameter of the piston and stuff, is that stuff you have to calculate. So, triangles, again, comes down to knowing what a right triangle is, obtuse triangle, an equilateral triangle is. So, right triangle, we know there's one angle, 90 degrees, and the other two will make up the other 90 degrees. Isosceles means that you have two equal sides. That will be something they'll give you a question on. They'll tell you you have an isosceles triangle with a side measurement of 14 or whatever, and you want to know something. They may tell you two, these two sides are 14, but they'll tell you 14 once, telling you that, that they're the same. That's your two sides that are equal on the isosceles triangle. So you have to remember that. Equilateral, all three sides are there. They'll tell you how an equilateral triangle and they'll give you one measurement. You have to remember what they are. And you might have to remember these are all 60 degree angles because they'll only give you part of the information. And if you grasp trying to look for the rest of the information, you have to know what these are in order to use the information they give you. They have to add up to 180, right, Harry? Pardon me? They have to add up to 180? Yeah, yeah. inside yeah. a triangle. These will be 360s, they'll be a 90, probably a. 60, 30, 45, 45. So knowing these are both 45s, knowing these are all 60s, um, that's the type of information that you have to be able to pull out of your head when you have that information and ask a question about it. And they use these words. They're the ones that you really want to be, um, again, know that. Triangle always has 180 degrees in it. This one, 60, 60, 60. This one would be 45, 45. No, this would be uh, I guess you don't really you don't really know the, the um, angles on it. You know this one will be 90. So again know what's, what the triangle names represent, because that will indicate some of the information that is required. Right? So, we have a Pythagoras theorem. Most, I'm going to say you got a really good chance of seeing this on the exam in some form or another. So, what is this actually saying? Here's an example question that you would expect to see. If you're looking up to the top of a 35 foot crane and are standing 40 feet away from it, from the base, how far are you away, how far is the top? So top's up there, here, here, over there is where the crane is, and the crane is going to boom up in the air. So we'll tell you if the boom is in the vertical position, how far you are away from it, so you have to just be able to say, I'm this far from the boom. So, when you give you that information, number one, you've got this crane, and it's got a boom. You're standing over here. And it tells you that you're 40 feet away, so anytime you get a question, draw it out on a piece of paper. Don't try to think in your head. Draw out all the information they give you. You're 40 feet away from it, and they tell you the crane is a 35 foot tall, a 30 foot 
35 foot high crane. She knows it gets up in its vertical position as high as that crane can possibly go is 35 feet. So, you know this? Now you're looking to find out where that is. So that'd be all the information they give you. You just drew it out. Now, you know something. You know Pythagoras theorem is if you have any triangle, right triangle, it has to be a right triangle. It can't be obtuse or acute triangle. It has to be a right triangle. And you know any two sides, you can figure out the third. So here's the one, and this is one I sort of remember, just because the numbers really go. So I would draw it out and say three, four, and five. So this particular triangle, if it's three feet long, it is three by three is nine. So if you're squaring something, the square just means you multiply the same height and width. You get, so this would be the three, it's three by three. That's how you square something, you multiply it by itself. Aside this four, you have four by four, which gives you 16. This side is five, which gives you five by five, which would give you 25. So it's one of the few that's going to come out that isn't in decimal places. That's the reason I like to remember it. All I got to remember is three, four, five. If I square A and square B, add them together, I'll get 25. I take the square root and I'll get five. So the sides of this are three. This, this side is four. That side's five. So they give you this information, three and four, you know this side is five. So again, remember these squares just from a visual perspective. So no matter where you are, you have the formula that is a squared plus b squared equals c squared, where c is the hypotenuse. c has always got to be the angle or the line opposite to the right angle. Make sense? No. This is always going to be. So if they give you this one, you have to go. Remember when we talked about transposing? You can always do the same thing here. You can do a squared minus a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And because I put the minus here, this is now a minus a squared. So B equals C squared minus A squared. That would be the formula if I was looking for side B. And I could do the same thing for if I was looking for A. B squared. You need to be squared on Pardon me? The square on the Oh, yes, this should be B squared. They're always squared. And you use this square root symbol on your calculator. So when you take the other two, add them together or subtract them, whatever you're doing to whichever side you want, <coughs> you got to remember that you got to take the square root of one. They're normally looking for the hypotenuse. In most cases, I know of the one of them that I heard that is that is is really nice. Come back to this question. Just off the top of your head, without putting anything down, if this was a 40-foot high crane and you're standing 40 feet away from it, how far are you away? Nope. Think, don't, don't think math anymore. That's where we go wrong when we get into what you call it, but if, these, if this was 40 feet and this is 40 feet, what kind of triangle do we have? Well, I, I, I shouldn't say no because I didn't do the math when I asked the question. But instead of saying this person is 40 feet away, they could say you have a, a kind of triangle has 
two sides? Isosceles. Isosceles. So now you have an isosceles triangle. So you, you do know that these two sides are the same. Um, so you still take 40 squared, 40 squared, add those two together, the square root of it. I don't know what it is. I guess the reason I, I, I said no to start with is, you know, start to think about, because they may not tell you, they may say you, you have a, you, you make equilateral triang triangle and you have a 40 foot crane, and you are standing way looking up at a 45 degree angle, which is what this would be. They wouldn't give you this measurement. They would say, you're looking up at a 45 degree angle. How would you know what the length of this side is? You know, all they give you is one measurement. You have a 40 foot high crane. You're standing away from the base looking up at a 45 degree angle. The only way this can be 45, this is going to be 45 if this is 90. Right? If we have an equilateral triangle, and I guess that <laughs> this size and this side are going to be the same. Okay? And now I know I'm 40 feet away. Now I can do my math. I can go back to, I think if you jump ahead of where I was at, you take 40 squared, 40 squared. Take the square root of whatever those two together are. And I don't know what they are. I guess maybe you did that. Well, no, I did this one. Yeah, but yeah. So that's why I, I say when you read the question, read the question twice, find out what information they give you, and then draw a little picture. If you're like me, you don't have to make a crane actually look like a crane. <laughs> Just draw a stick person or a stick thing and put some measurements on the side, and then when you draw it, like you're standing there, it will, it will come fairly easy to you. Now, I'm gonna throw the same question I just asked you in the third, in a, in a third way. They tell you you have a 40 foot high crane, and the crane is at a 60 degree, angle and you're looking up at a 60 degree angle how far are you away from the crane or I can ask the same question and say how far are you away from the boom what do we know if we have one person looking at 60 and this is 60 what do we know with this 60, angle 60. Yeah, shouldn't have that yeah. we know that that now is a 60 and that's equilateral. What do we know about equilateral triangle? All angles. All exactly. But what else do we know? What else do we know? Three matching angles. Yeah. One besides that on an equilateral triangle. But All, side All sides are the same. So we know this is a 40 foot crane. How far are we away 40. from it? 40. How far up to the boom is 40. it? 40. So there's one question, but I can ask that in three different ways by giving you three different pieces of information. I can say you're looking at 60 and the crane, this boom is out at 60 and give you one measurement and ask you either of those questions or I can say this is a 90 and he's at 45 and then you know it's an isosceles triangle and again you know angles and measurements at least two sides are equal and then I just have anything and then you know square, square, and take the square root on this, and you'll be able to figure that out. So don't, I guess why I bring this up is I can ask this question, I can change a few different details on it, and we only look at this part, and they ask you about the equilateral triangle or something, you'll be thinking, shit, we didn't go over this. <laughs> But it's all exactly the same. They're just asking it in different ways. That's why when we talked about the angles, uh, right angle, and isosceles triangle, equilateral triangle, if they throw that into the information they're giving you, draw it out on a piece of paper like this, and then remember the formula. So again, we got to, this is, C 
equals the hypotenuse. So now we've got another one that we have to memorize. So we get one, two, three, four, now we're on our fifth one. 